Yo, what's up guys? So today I'm gonna to be showing you how to make the best side bases you'll ever make in Serum. So side bases are one of those things that sound really simple to make. You're like, oh, it's just a little like basey pluck or whatever. But there's so many subtleties that go into it that can either make or break it. Side bases are used a lot in hard dance. They're used a lot in techno now too. And a similar variation of that is used in house as well, like melodic house or whatever. So this is a production technique that no matter what genre you're in, you're going to get a lot of use out of this. All right. So before we dive in, this is what we're going to be making today. So we have our side base and we have our kick. So a lot of YouTube tutorials just show a side base being made as a saw wave going through a low pass filter. So to show you why this just sounds terrible, I'm just gonna make that real quick. So we have our saw wave, we have a low pass filter, and I'm gonna take envelope two and modulate the cutoff of the low pass filter. And this is what it sounds like. And that doesn't sound nearly as good as this. The main thing that I've taken away from that is in a lot of these professional sounding side bases, there is like a really clean transient on the front that gives the rest of the sound so much clarity and it just punches through the mix so much. So I found this cashmere side bass sample that I really like and I'm listening to it and I'm like, what is the difference? I'm like, what am I missing in my sound? It sounds really clean, punchy, it just cuts. So I'm gonna use this plugin called SciScope Pro and I'm gonna put this on the side base. So if we hit play and start analyzing this waveform, you'll notice in the beginning, there is this really prominent transient. And if we zoom in even further, we can get more information about the sound. So it's just a sine wave all the way up until this point right here where the wavetable starts to become more complex. So since we have a side scope on this track and the cashmere side base, we can actually look at both the waveforms at the same time. So if we open up side scope and we hit stack, you can see that in the red, we have our cashmere side base and in this like light blue green or whatever, we have our new serum track. So let's start by designing that transient. What's really fun is we can actually zoom in and recreate this transient almost exactly. So let's open up Serum and let's also open up SciScope. We're gonna leave these both open the whole time. So just by looking at this waveform, I know I'm gonna need to make this transient with a sine wave. So let's go to oscillator A and we're gonna go to analog and select analog BD sine. You can see that this wavetable is jumping around a lot. And if we wanna recreate this transient exactly, we can't have that phase just jumping around like that. So let's go ahead and turn the random phase all the way down. Now you can see if we zoom out, you can see the wavetable starting from the same point every time. And that's the kind of consistency we want. So in order to make this transient, we're gonna to need to apply some modulation to the pitch of oscillator A. So let's go to the matrix and we're gonna set LFO one as our source. And for our destination, we're gonna to go to global and master tune. We can hover over this arrow that points both ways. And this is where we're gonna determine whether we want a bipolar modulation or a unipolar modulation. For this sound, we want it to be unipolar because we want it to start at zero and modulate into the positive values. And if we hit play, it'll sound like this. Head back to LFO one and we're gonna select envelope mode. And instead of a triangle shape, we're gonna make this more of a descending saw shape. Now this modulation is taking entirely too long. So to figure out exactly how long we want this pitch modulation to be, we can zoom in and in SciScope, we can hover over where this pitch modulation approximately ends for our reference Psi. And in the top right corner, you can see it says 15.65 milliseconds. So let's go to a website that converts BPM to milliseconds. And if we put our tempo in at 145, we can see that 15 milliseconds falls right in between this one over 64 and one over 128. So I'm gonna select one over 64 as my rate and then I'm just going to double click and make this envelope a bit shorter. So now you can hear we have like more of a transient punch on the front. So let's zoom in and we want to try to line up these cycles as close as possible. So if I zoom all the way in, you can see that the reference psi is cycling a lot faster at the beginning. So we're going to go back to the matrix and increase our range. 
And even with the range all the way up for the master tune in the matrix, it still feels like we can't get it high enough. So what we can do is make a new modulation. We'll stay in the matrix and we'll select LFO2 as our source and then set the destination to oscillator A, course pitch. We'll make this unipolar and drag the range all the way up. Let's go ahead and make this another descending saw, turn on envelope mode and take the rate up to about one over 256. And if we press play, you can hear it and you can see it visually on the size scope that we have pitched this up to almost an impossible level. So now let's just drag the range down for this new modulation. Now we're getting really close. You can see these peaks and valleys start to line up really nicely. So in the beginning of the transient, this looks really close. But as we zoom out, we can see that the reference just decays a lot faster. So what we're gonna need to do is start tweaking some of these envelopes to get this to look a little bit more similar. So that sounds pretty good to me. It sounds like almost like the top of a kick, like a punch. And let's tweak it just a bit more. And that sounds pretty good right there. So now that our pitch modulation is set, now what we want to do is create an LFO for our volume modulation. So we're going to go to LFO 3 and we're going to drag this to the level of oscillator A, turn the level all the way down and drag the range all the way up. Then for LFO 3, we're going to make a shape kind of like this and make sure the rate is something pretty fast. And we can make this even shorter because we want this transient to end at around 15 milliseconds. So let's double click and make a point. And that's like exactly the length we want. All right, so that's it for the transient of the side base. Now we're gonna move on to making the body or the tail. So to do that, we're gonna turn on oscillator B and I'm gonna go to analog, basic shapes, and I'm gonna select the saw wave right here. So if we hit play, you can see that this waveform is just looking terrible. The transient doesn't look good. The f it's constantly phase shifting. So we're gonna do two things right off the bat. We're gonna turn random phase all the way down. That helps for the, the rest of the sound, but well, we're gonna take that volume modulation that we used for oscillator A, and we're gonna drag that to the level of oscillator B. Except what we're gonna do is take the range and drag it all the way down to negative 100. So this is creating almost like a side chain effect. So while oscillator A is on, oscillator B is off. And then as the level of oscillator A is turning down, the level of oscillator B is turning up. So that's why when you zoom in, you can see that there is just a perfect sine wave and then it turns into a perfect saw. Now, something else that we could do to make sure that these two waveforms blend together even more perfect is adjust the phase of oscillator B. I actually really like how this looks because it just cycles right into a saw wave. So an example of what it would look like if it was bad is something maybe like this. Because it just doesn't look smooth. It, lo it looks kind of abrupt. So something like that, if we zoom in, that transition is pretty darn good. I mean, I, I can't ask for better than that. So for the next step, we're gonna finally turn the filter on. I know if you watch other YouTube tutorials, that's like the first thing that gets done. You take a wavetable, whether it's a saw, whatever else, you run it through the filter, the low pass filter, and you modulate it. And that's how you get that pluck sound. I know, I get that, trust me. But all the stuff that we've done up until this point will ensure that you're gonna have a super tight, consistent, snappy, reactive side base. The rest of the tutorial, honestly, it's gonna be a lot easier, a lot less tedious. So let's turn on that filter. We're gonna to go to MG low 18. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna let this transient bypass the filter. We don't wanna filter the transient. We're gonna turn on oscillator B for this filter. So oscillator B is gonna be going through the filter. Then let's take envelope two. We'll turn the attack all the way down, the sustain all the way down. And let's set the decay to like 250. We'll, we'll just start there. Then take envelope two, drag it to the cutoff, and we're gonna hold shift, alt, and click so we can make a unipolar modulation. Now if we hit play, 
And let's look at this on SciScope. Cause what we wanna do is not only use SciScope to analyze the waveform, like the frequency of it or the phase of it, but we wanna look at the volume as well. And now that we're running oscillator B through the filter, we can, we can turn this up a little bit. And what I am gonna do is I'm gonna adjust this phase a tiny bit. And that looks a little better. So that's sounding really good right now. So there's only a few more steps and then you can drag in the MIDI from the original side pattern and then we're kind of good to go. So even though we've done volume modulations, our envelope one is still like our master amplitude envelope. So we're gonna turn the sustain all the way down on envelope one and set the decay to around 450. And it's just gonna sort of shave off that tail. And this is gonna be really helpful for when we have that really fast side pattern. Then what we'll do is we're gonna turn on the noise oscillator and we're gonna select analog bright white. I'm gonna drag envelope one to the level of the noise oscillator, turn the level all the way down and the range to about like 40. So we want to give just a little bit of character on the front of this transient, but there's too much noise happening here. So what we can do is go to the matrix and where it says envelope one, there's this curve column here that a lot of people don't use. And if we drag this down, it's essentially using envelope one, but it's shortening it like a lot. And if we turn off the noise oscillator, to me, I just really like that noise in the front. It sounds really smooth and sort of fills up the frequency spectrum for that little beginning. After that, we're gonna go to effects. We're gonna turn on the compressor. Just add a little bit of compression. Then I'm gonna turn on the filter and I'm not actually gonna be filtering with this filter, but I'm gonna go down to miscellaneous and I'm gonna go to high EQ six and I'm gonna set this DB plus minus to 50. And if we hit play, it's really not doing anything. But the reason why I like this is because now I can utilize this drive knob. So I can turn the drive up and it's essentially like I'm boosting this sound into a clipper. One important thing to note is if we hit tab, we can see what the sound is actually peaking at. And so I have this drive pumped up all the way. And for whatever reason, anytime I do this on my presets, which is almost always, I always like to go to the master and set the volume to negative 12.1. So now if we hit play, it's peaking at almost around zero. And no matter where I put the drive, I can drive it pretty hard and it's never going above zero. So this is really useful to me and a great trick I haven't seen anybody talk about. So let's take our side pattern MIDI and let's listen to that. Now I hear some clicking and this is definitely because the release on envelope one is all the way down to zero. So let's turn this back up. Let's turn this to like 20. It sounds really good. Let's open up this side scope as well so we can see what's happening. So that is a really clean looking waveform. Just from looking, I think we can shorten this decay on envelope one. That looks a lot better. So let's bring in a kickstart for some side chain. And I really like using this classic chain. And it's important to note, you have to put the side scope at the end of the chain so it can digest everything that's happening before it. So now let's turn the kick back on. And if we press play, it'll sound like this. And so that's it. I mean, that side bass sounds so good. It sounds so clean and punchy. Um, if you want this preset, I'm gonna put it in our Discord. You can head over there and download it for free. Uh, I'll leave the link for that in the description. And if you want more sounds like this, whether it's templates, presets, Ableton racks, sample packs, whatever, head over to raveyardsounds.com and check those out. We have an awesome hard dance pack out right now. So uh, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you later.